Could have kept going forever. Hi guys, how you doing? Nick Jennings from Big Guitar Interactive, GI Plus. It's Monday evening, we're down here at the studio doing the thing that we do on Monday evenings, which is hang out and talk about the guitar. And today, we are continuing our discussion on the subject of, you guessed it, tapping. Now, last week, we had a hugely productive stream uh, on the subject of tapping. We got a little bit into the weeds, but for the most part, it was kind of an introduction to the wonderful world of, uh, sorry, my hair's feeling a little bit all over the place, uh, a wonderful world of tapping and all that sort of thing. Today, we're kind of continuing that further forward. We're gonna be getting a little bit more into the shreddy end of things, but fear not, if you're not a, uh, a fretboard destroying shredder, don't you worry, because we've got something for everyone here, right? So even if you're not really a big uh, bleepy bloopy shreddy tapper, we're gonna have some good stuff for you. But for those of you who are kind of asking, there have been a few of you over the last week, we're gonna get a little bit deeper into that sort of thing. So uh, a couple of things, first of all, if you are a new viewer, I wanna take this opportunity to welcome you on board. Thanks so much for coming and joining us. If you are one of our returning members of our uh, growing community of a uh, live stream, uh, you know what I'm hesitant to call you viewers, let's say participants, right? The guitar players that come and hang out with us every Monday, hey, it's great to have you back. It's lovely to see you. I, I look forward to this every week. It really is kind of a highlight. Uh, again, we're down at the studio. We have a long litany of technical issues, like dropping picks down at the studio. We have gone over this with a fine tooth comb to make sure things work today. So listen, right? If things are sounding good, if you're enjoying what we're doing, let us know in the comments but a couple of ways you can help us keep the lights on, metaphorically uh, and also literally, um is you can consider doing the following. You can help us out if you're enjoying these streams by going to this URL, which will take you to GI Plus, where you can go and get loads of great guitar lessons, an unbelievable wealth of lessons covering everything from the shreddy stuff that we're talking about today through to uh, blues, slide. We've got some melodic stuff. We've got some theory stuff, fretboard knowledge, technique, you name it. It's in there. Lessons from myself, from Andy James, Andy Wood, uh, Rick Graham, Tom Quayle, Sam, Bell, Giorgio Searchy, you name it, it's in there. Also, you can give us a thumbs up on whatever platform you're watching on. You can drop us a comment too because the algorithm loves comments. So drop us a comment. And also, don't forget, we're gonna be answering your questions as the stream goes on, but also we're gonna be having a dedicated Q&A session a little bit later on towards the end of the stream. So if you have questions, get them in. We'll be talking about them as we go further. But before we do that, let's quickly dive in to the comment section. My laptop is over here. So if I'm looking this way, that's why. Uh, and let's see how folks are getting on in a stream. And surprisingly on two counts, Foghornish is in at 6.06 oh, 6 p.m. with the first comment, right? Saying, uh, all right, fellas, was anyone at the Northeast Guitar Show yesterday for those in the Northeast of England? I was at the Northeast Guitar Show yesterday, right? I, I, you should have said hi, right? Like, man, you know, anyway, listen, hey, I had a great time. For those of you who were at the Northeast Guitar Show, Fantastic, right? Really, really great show. Uh, I was speaking to Peter, who runs Northern Guitar Shows. Apparently, it's the biggest Northeast guitar show on record this year. So, man, guitar shows are back, which is really, really exciting stuff. Birmingham was great this year. So I'm just moving this microphone a little bit. Birmingham was fantastic this year. Uh, I hope this is a positive sign for what we can expect in NAM this year, but we'll keep you guys up to date with that as we go in. So, yeah, I was there, and it was great. Uh, who else do we have in the house? Marcin is uh, second through the door, saying, hello, guys. Uh, in fact, not even been sitting through the door many uh many folks in apparently before marcin today we have this running joke for those who are just watching on the replay or maybe you're new to this that marcin is always the first one in marcin it's great to see you sitting over here watching andy james lessons uh his his uh okay at the beginning is legendary okay yeah you know what it is like i have a similar kickoff it's always like Hi guys, it's one of them. Uh, and see you next time is the sign off as well. It's really weird. You develop these catchphrases when you do this a fair bit. Um, but yeah, totally agree, man. Andy James, the man, right? Really enjoyed Andy James' lessons. Um, uh, Four Cornish has some Andy James DVDs from Lick Library. Yeah, dude, he's a great player. He's a nice guy too. You know, met Andy a couple of times. He's a really lovely dude. Even uh, on a long red eye flight, he still took the time to, to hang out and chat. Nice dude, great player. Anyway, PJ is in the house. PJ says, uh, hi Nick, hi guys. 
Uh, root out my old Slam Ons book and cassette from the 80s after last week's uh, very inspiring session. Looking forward to tonight's stream. Hey, that's killer, man. You know, hopefully we've got some 80s inspired stuff that you might take uh, a shine to, maybe. Who knows? But uh, fingers crossed. we got some good stuff for you. Uh, say, ooh, one moment. I just lost the stream there for a moment. Sacred God Slayer says, uh, Hi, guys. Hi, Nick. I'll be multitasking uh, <laughs> in multitasking mode this evening uh, as the stream overlaps with the soccer match. <laughs> Uh, a nice concession to our American friends over there. Soccer being what the rest of the civilized world calls football. Shots fired. I'm not even a football fan, right? But whatever. Um, I know our man, Sacred God Slayer, is our Italian correspondent. And, you know, football is like religion in Italy. So, hey, totally. I, I, that's fine. You can, you can do both, man. Uh, power to you, like one eye on each screen. Kill it. Uh, Larry Warren is in the house. Uh, Larry Warren says, greetings once again. Hope you are all well. I'm very well, Larry. Hope you're well too, man. Uh, I learned a lot in the last lesson. I'm looking forward to seeing what you, uh, what you teach us today. Well, I'm glad you said that, mate, because we've got loads of cool stuff coming for you. Timothy Appling is in the house, uh, who I keep calling Timothy Appalling. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Nick and fellow jammers. Feeling extra appalling today, Nick. Uh, I hurried myself away from the beach uh, and bikinis for this lesson uh, and found out I'm an hour early because the time changer. Oh no! Oh, dude. Uh, you know what? Like the beach will be there when you get done, right? Florida Keys is a lovely place, so uh, the beach will be there when we're finished. Uh, but hey, man, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Um, I forgot about the time change. That's why we always say 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, we're changing soon a couple of weeks i think uh, i'll have to check my calendar uh mark Manish in the house says uh hi guys uh hey guys hello nick uh i've been adding five minute uh blocks of unfamiliar techniques into my session uh no self critique and it's paying off that's very cool right i'm really into that idea so if you have a new technique that you want to play with like hybrid picking or like uh economy picking or any of the stuff that we've talked about in these technique fundamental streams adding just a little bit of dedicated time into your practice session is a very good way to grapple with this stuff that's pretty cool i'm very interested to know what uh like how you're developing that so let us know in the comments um, what sort of stuff you're doing in these five minute sessions because that sounds really interesting. Um, anyway, on we go. So Cranker Tom is in the house. You know what it is? This is all going on like before we've even started. A friend Cranker Tom says, uh, hi, guitar crazy community. I'm happy that tapping is on the same table because uh, it's hard for me to hold a pick today. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, my right thumb is somewhat battle weary uh, from working on my camper. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's a good reason into that, right? That's good. Justin Ray says, uh, back again, way too many things happening to mention, but I'm glad to catch these sessions live as often as I can. It's good to have you on board, man. I appreciate it. Let's get our rattle on because we're going to be on forever with this. Uh, I love to hear you guys' comments though, so I like to go through as many of them as I can. Uh, hi people, uh, me from Mallorca, says Cowcat, in the sun, uh, but I wonder if I have, why I have no bikinis near me, uh, because you're a cactus, Bumblefoot would say. Hey, maybe, who knows? I don't know, right? Um, I too am bikini repellent. Uh, they don't fit me, uh, as you can tell. Apparently, this is not forced perspective and I'm the width of a Marshall 4x12 and they're not just significantly far behind me and turned at an angle or anything. Uh, Mark Crandall's in the house. Um, yeah, we're getting that. Um, we're falling foul of these time changes. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Steve McD is in the house playing harmonica tonight. Very, very interesting. That's pretty cool. Blue Sumlin is here. Um, our friend James, our talented cameraman and head of all things video related, who's been testing all the audio with me today, is in the house. Uh, Rory Lisbon is in. Rory is always on the money uh, with its observations. We're into that. Uh, Cranky Tom says, wow, that's one hell of a shirt. Do you know what it is? This shirt's got me in a lot of trouble with a few people, uh, but it feels really nice. It's very, very, um, I guess, velvety. It's kind of nice. Uh, Marcin is testing his, uh, teasing me with that PRS. I might get the SE Zach Myers. We did a review on the SE Zach Myers. It's gorgeous, right? It's the uh, SE private stock. Uh, that's the deal. Uh, Gary Frampton with a great comment. Hey guys, speaking of tapping, don't forget to tap that like button. Baboom. Our friend Anthony is tuning in on Facebook. Anthony, it's great to see you. Uh, Chris Davis is in. Uh, who else do we have? Um... <laughs> My friend Craig is raiding the missus' wardrobe. Uh, you know how it works, man. You know how the deal is. Um, Connor Thomas. Connor. Hey, man. Listen, right? You guys keep your eyes peeled for Connor Thomas. Connor's a great guitar player. Big things coming soon uh, from Connor and ourselves. Who else do we have? Blue Sumlin is uh, last week's stream. Uh, my tapping has improved a bit. Discovered I was applying too much pressure with my finger. So lightly as it me. For sure. You know, it's not pushing. It's tapping obvious statement to make but even still 
Uh, Liam Tate is in the house. This week's stream, uh, this weekly stream is great. Fourth time tuning in. Uh, we'll cough up the hundred pounds, hundred dollars soon enough, dude. Really kind of you to say, man. Thanks for coming on board. I don't think we've interacted in the comments yet, so if this is your first time commenting, hey, listen, welcome to our little community. It's great to have you. I think you'll really get a kick out of the GI Plus, I am sure. Um, so who else do we have in the house? Let's keep going. Uh, our friend Shaz says, uh, hello, fellow guitar players from Bangladesh. Wow, I don't think we have any uh, Bangladeshi viewers yet. I think you may be our first one. So listen, hey, man, great to have you. Uh, Panu is in the house. Uh, Scott Bogfoot is tuning in from... Uh, I will pronounce this wrong, right? Newfoundland. A majority, right? We don't say these things right, so I do apologize. Uh, Matt, I did. You know how it works. Uh, anyway, listen, right? Let's, Matt's my drummer in Blitzkrieg, by the way, in case you guys are wondering. So, let's get to uh, the business of tapping. Last week, we were discussing the tapping technique, the fundamentals of how it works and all that sort of thing. I want to remind you that today, for you guys who are non-GI Plus subscribers, today is the last day that you can access the exclusive Danny Gill lesson that we shared last week. Just wanna take a quick minute and show you uh, the lesson in question. It's linked down below. It's a one we dug out of the GI Plus archive. It's not available on the GI Plus site. You can only get it at the link down below where it says exclusive Danny Gill lesson. It will be live for, I'm gonna keep it live for another 24 hours for non-GI Plus members. But if you are a GI Plus subscriber, you can get this lesson permanently at this link. This is a little preview of what you get. It's very cool. When we come back, more tapping. All right, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to create a solo guitar piece using two hand tapping. This is something that Joe Satriani has done so successfully on songs such as Midnight and A Day at the Beach. I'm gonna go ahead and play through an example of this style, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the technique. All right, so let's talk about the technique. First thing, don't need the pick, put the pick away. There it is. Just in case we need it, I'll have it close at hand, but we're not gonna need the pick for now. Now, let's grab a chord. How about a G chord? I'll play a G bar chord. So if you want the rest of that lesson, you can get it at the link down below. It's an exclusive lesson from Danny Gill. Doesn't exist as part of a series. It's a one shot, so you'll only get it at that link. Non-members will get this for 24 hours, but those of you who are members, you'll get it permanently at that link. So bookmark it, get it in your, uh, save that page, get it in your bookmarks bar, whatever, wherever you keep your favorite guitar playing links. Put it there. Anyway, let's get down to the tapping thing. We're gonna go a little bit further than we did last week, but a very quick re-primer for anybody who missed it on the subject of tapping, how it works. Slightly mysterious and misleading technique in terms of the way it's taught. Let's go to the close-up cam. It's really just hammer-ons and pull-offs with the right hand. So let's do a little bit of something here. What I wanna do is we're gonna fret a note on our G string. Let's fret fret number seven. We're gonna fret that, and then we're gonna use the middle finger from our right hand to hammer on to fret number 12 on the G string. So let's just do that first, just to establish that we're all uh, kind of reading from the same hymn sheet, so to speak. So fret the seventh fret note on your G string, hammer on with the right hand, middle finger, or first finger if you prefer, whichever finger you have available to, to you. I like the middle finger. And we're gonna hammer on reasonably forcefully using some of the principles that we talked about in our legato lessons, i.e. we're striking the string against the fret We'll talk more about that in a moment. And we should get this sound. Nice, pretty simple, straightforward, clean tone, but you guys can hear what's going on there. So the same is true in reverse when it's time to make a note lower than our tapping hand, when it's time to hand off from this hand to notes on this hand, we do it with either a brush or a pluck style pull off. Now we've talked about this before, the brush style pull off is where we use the friction of the friction rather of the skin to brush the string, much like we're doing this, like Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of brushing technique, we do that sort of movement to get a comparatively soft, but still forceful enough note. If we wanted to get a really loud sounding note, we would pluck by getting the bone of our finger under the string 
and giving it a big old flick. We want that for certain special effects, but we don't necessarily want it all of the time, especially if our goal is to sound smooth. So what we'll do here is we're gonna hammer on and then using our brush technique, we're gonna pull off and see if we can get it nice and smooth and nice and fast. Now, what you'll notice here is that if you're using a single finger to tap on the right hand above a certain speed, this is gonna stop being a movement of the finger and start being a movement of the, uh, I guess the entire wrist. And it's almost like a wrist flexion and extension kind of movement, which is this sort of move. So if you imagine knocking on a door like that, if you know you visit a friend and you knock on their door, it's that sort of thing, but with your finger extended almost. Now, in terms of the thumb on the right hand, lift to play guitar, has asked a question about this already. Uh, I hope you can address the thumb on the right hand neck. We're gonna talk about the thumb in a moment. So, um, <laughs> we got some love for the shirt as well. You know what it is, this is my favorite shirt. I love the shirt, right? So I, I'll hear, I will hear no ill words against the shirt. I have an equally appalling collection of jackets, um, which Paul Reed Smith said should have had me deported the first time I wore them over to America, but never mind. Uh, I gather shirts aren't, you know, appalling shirts aren't legal. Thankfully, otherwise, you know, I'd be going to jail. Anyway, so we have our tapping movement, right? We're gonna come back to that in a moment, but let's just see if we can get this nice and clean, nice and fast. Let's go to the close-up cam. You will notice with the thumb, what I'm doing here is I'm using my thumb uh, similar to how I'm using my thumb on my left hand. In that, I'm not really applying pressure with the thumb. Um, rather, I'm using the thumb as a proprioceptive, uh, I guess a proprioceptive tool, for want of a better word. It basically, I put it on the neck and it helps me feel where my fingers are in relation to the guitar's neck. So this is kind of how the thumb functions on the electric guitar, which is set up generally quite lightly. We don't need a lot of thumb pressure to really make it work. We're just touching so that we can feel where our finger is in space in relation to the guitar's neck. Here's an experiment. I want you to take your thumb and I want you to put it on the top of the guitar's neck. You can see I'm just on the binding of the guitar here. And we're gonna tap on and off on our G string and we'll see how that feels. It should still feel like we can get that bouncing wrist type movement. Let's do it again, but without the thumb on top. Notice how strange that feels. Now put the thumb on top again. Comfortable, strange. Now your mileage may vary. Other people will do this perhaps with a pinky underneath I've seen, that can work too, or even with both. So Red Beach is kind of a guy that will sometimes kind of hook his pinky finger underneath. Great tapper, you know, like one of the best, certainly of his era. But for me, I feel like thumb on top is a good place to start because it gives us a sense of where our finger is in space. Now, once we have this, once we have this little movement going on, right, what I'm gonna get you to do is I want you just to move the tapping finger around from uh, 12, down to 11. And we're gonna outline, actually funny if Rick Elliott's just asked about outlining chords, we're gonna outline a G major seven very quickly, which is this lovely chord here. There's a G major 13 for you guys out there. So what we might do is we may tap on 12, then we're gonna move the tapping finger down to 11. And you'll notice what I'm doing here is I'm sliding my hand to get that movement. Let's do, let's do a few taps on each. I'm doing eight, so I'm going, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we'll speed it up. So we'll maybe try moving twice as fast. I want you to grab your guitars and do this with me, by the way, if you're not doing it already. Because this is a cool introduction to some higher speed tapping ideas that we're gonna get to in a second. So we have this moving of the right hand. That's kind of an important part of the tapping thing. Let's try moving it every four. Let's go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's try doing it every two. Let's go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Let's try every one. Should be easy enough, right? Should be something that you guys can, uh, uh, can mimic. Now in terms of the pull off direction, you guys will notice that I'm pulling off downwards. You're free to pull off upwards if that feels more comfortable. There are lots of great guitar players who do that. For me, I prefer downwards, I guess it's being a Steve Vai fan. It's one of those. I know Ed would do the, the upwards into the hand thing and you know, that's cool too. So the next thing we need to do, next thing we need to do with this is we have our tapping motion down. We now need to start exchanging between the tapping hand and different fingers 
on the left hand. That's how we start to construct these arpeggio ideas that are very common with tapping when it comes to you playing lead guitar lines. So what we might do is we might do something with the, uh, I guess the lick that uh, should not be. Now I talk about this all the time, right? Um, the lick that should not be is this guy where we play, again I'll go to the close-up cam and show you, the Eddie Van Halen lick where we go. Now times when this it's okay to play this, right? The times when it's okay to play this are when you're playing a Van Halen solo, when you're playing the solo from one, that's it. Right, there's <laughs> never another okay time to play that lick. Right, there are lots of other cool licks that we can use, uh, and we're gonna go over a few of them, but for the time being, let's talk about, um, let's talk about that lick. We're gonna get something in a minute. Now, Timothy Appling's asking the question, uh, I see you use your middle finger to tap. Does it matter which finger, or should we use middle fingers? I've been using my index finger. It's totally preference. Uh, I really don't think it matters. There are great guitar players who use their index finger. There are great guitar players who use their middle finger. For me, Timothy, the reason I use my middle finger uh, is because I find it easier to store the pick. I'll show it to this camera, hopefully you guys can see it. I find it easier to store the pick in the crook of my index finger, right? That's realize how inflexible my wrists are. Um, I've got very tight forearm muscles, apparently, um, from picking up heavy objects for fun. Um, so yeah, I store the pick in the crook of my index finger, um, and I find it easier to store it there and tap with this finger than I do to, for example, store it here and tap with this finger. But it's just practice, again. And for me, uh, uh, again, it's kind of a, I don't think it really matters. I think it's kind of down to you. Uh, Liam Tate says, oh yeah, that's a good shout, right? The Van Halen Tapman Lake is also finally playing the Power Rangers theme tune. Yeah, that's fine too. I'll let you have it. That's totally okay. So anyway, apart from that, it's, I guess the reason it's the lick that should not be is it's the first one anybody learns uh, and anybody gets up to speed when it's time to do any tapping stuff. And you can see people do the mental run up where they'll go like, play some perfectly tasteful pentatonic licks. And there's almost like the mental watch this where we go. Nope, do not, do not do that. <laughs> Anyway, listen, we'll get to that in a minute. So, um, Secret Regard Slayer uh, is referring to pulling up with the right hand. Um, right hand is easier because the left hand pulls up. Ah, interesting, the counter pressure between left hand and right hand. I'm gonna star this up because we're gonna come back to that. Again, back with the great observations, we love that. So anyway, going back to our lick, right? So this is our lick that should not be, and this is where we're gonna begin. We're gonna start by playing, uh, again, our 12th fret tap and our uh, seventh fret, uh, I guess, our held notes. Now we're gonna begin by doing this tap here. And then we're gonna change the note that we're holding from seven down to four, for argument's sake. Let's just hold four instead with our first finger. And let's try practicing going between this and this. You'll notice there's a period of time when the tapping finger is on, when we can very cleanly get one note held down without it ringing out. Now that's kind of interesting in of itself, but let's try playing between them. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have our first finger held in position to receive the note. We're gonna tap, pull off, and then we're gonna hammer on with our right hand, either third finger or fourth finger, I prefer fourth finger. Uh, we're gonna tap, pull off to four, hammer on, to seven. And here we will develop the lick that shouldn't be. We're gonna go like this. Now, if you start playing this lick, it's on your head, but I'm gonna show you some cool licks that we can do. Not this isn't cool, but it's only cool if you're ready Van Halen. And I don't think any of us are ready Van Halen. Could be wrong. But anyway, this is a great lick because once you have this little rudiment going on, we can speed it up like crazy. And away it goes. So I'm not expecting you guys to be able to bring it up to that speed, but if you can, that's fantastic. So anyway, let's go a little bit further here, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce some more notes with our left hand, but we're gonna begin by introducing an open string. This in itself is actually quite cool. So let's try going like this. Let's try playing tap, pull off to seven, pull off to four, pull off to the open string. We get this. Let's go again, let's go to the close-up. 
we go. Everyone got that so far? Let me know if you do, because this actually sounds pretty cool. And here we're starting to get into the hot for teacher tapping pattern, which we'll get to in a minute, which is a lot more socially acceptable. So let's keep that, but this time what we'll do is once we've pulled off to our open string, we're gonna hammer back on to four and then seven on the same G string, so we get this. If you guys have it, let's start speeding it up. And this is gonna be a vehicle for learning some of the crucial aspects of doing some faster tapping licks. Now, we're not gonna go too much faster than that. Chris Davis has quite rightly pointed out that it's Hopper Teacher. Hopper Teacher would be here. <laughs> Whose idea was it to play that with the clean tone? That was mine. Uh, but even still, you guys get the idea, right? Uh, I can now play the theme to Mighty Mouse. <laughs> You're damn right you can. Uh, so anyway, listen, right? So we've got a little bit of that. Um, now, what I wanna do with this, I wanna begin by talking about one of the uh, interesting elements when it comes to creating uh, interesting sounding tapping licks, which is moving the right and left hand independently of each other. So the right and left hand, we can move one or the other or both to create changes when we go from one tapping pattern, I guess, to another. But we can keep this same idea of tap, pull off, pull off, open, hammer on, hammer on. Now all together, this will give us a six note pattern, which guitar players like to play, if this were our tempo, as. We like to play the 16th notes, right? Because, uh, sorry, 16th note triplets rather, because it feels nice. It sounds like it goes widdly, 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 widdly. We like that. We like six notes to a beat. So what we can do here is we can start to play with moving, let's say the right hand to begin with. So here what we might do is we might move the right hand from 12 down to, Fret number 11. And what we're doing here is we're beginning by outlining a G chord, which gives us G, G, B, D, G on top. When we change this G on top to an F sharp, it becomes G major seven, which gives us this. Very nice, okay? Let's do the same thing, but this time let's move it from 12 to 11, to 10, where we get this move. It's positively Beatles-esque, only very shreddy. Where we get this. Very nice. Now, let's do the same thing, but this time, let's take the left hand and let's move that. You've hoped the guys are still with me for this, by the way, right? Hopefully you're still with me. So we have. Here, let's take the, the left hand and let's move it up one fret from four and seven to five and eight. And it's gonna give us this. Which actually sounds really nice. Are you still with me? Let me know in the comments if you still got us, right? So this is, uh, again, we're getting into shreddy territory here, but it's not that crazy. I'm sure you'll agree. Like when you actually start doing this stuff, it's not actually that intimidating, really. Like, you know, if you've ever wanted to dip your toe into shreddy waters, this is the way to do it, right? It's a fun way to get some uh, pace into your playing, I guess. So let me know in the comments if you're still doing okay with this tapping stuff, right? Or if you need me to go back over anything, you want me to slow down at any point, you let me know, right? So we have this. Now, until this point, everything we've done has been what I would call, uh, I, I guess it's a fixed open position thing. We're relying on this G string to create some notes. Let's get rid of the G string so that we can then move our position around to our heart's content. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our tap, we're gonna put a close up cam, we're gonna take our tap, we're gonna take our seven and our four, and we're gonna bring a five in here. Here's a question from Daryl Queen, right? Very cool question. Uh, have you tried sequencing these same patterns so they aren't uh, tuplets, but instead eights? Sure have. Uh, so you might get something like this. Let's see if I can get my drums on the go. Uh, it's actually very cool. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Just 
briefly stopping to answer a question. I don't think the drums are going to work. Um, I think my drums are beyond saving today, but uh, what we might get is you might get something like this. Sounds very cool. It's actually a very, very cool technique. We'll get to that. So anyway, listen, right? So we're going to keep this. I'm very good question, a very good observation. So we have tap, we have seven, we have four. Instead of playing the open string, let's introduce finger two on fret number five. So here we get, ah, very good question from Brain Dog. I'll be answering that a little bit later on, right? So a very good question. We'll get to that in a minute. So for the time being, you guys who are making a bit of uh, string noise, fear not, right? Don't worry about that. We'll get to that. So anyway, uh, we also have a question from Live to Play Guitar about running out of momentum. Uh, don't worry, we're going to get to that too, right? I'll talk to you all about that. But for the time being, stay with me. So what we have is, until now, we had a sequence that we could consider going tap, and then with our left hand, high, middle, low, in the sense that high is our, um, yeah, our high is our, our highest note with our left hand, which is seven. Middle is the middle note in terms of pitch, which is four. Low is the open string. Let's change it. So four is the low note, and five is our middle note. So here what we get is we get tap, pull off to seven, pull off to five, pull off to four. This gives us something akin to an add 11 chord. What you might think about is like a G sus four briefly resolving to and from a G major. It's like this thing, which gives us this sound. Now this is getting a little more technically demanding, but here we're starting to get into some slightly more, I guess, useful tapping ideas. So what we might get here is we have, once again, tap, pull off to seven, pull off to five, pull off to four, hammer back on, hammer back on. Again, this shouldn't be, at this point, shouldn't be super challenging, right? It should be, maybe if you're not really much of a shredder, maybe you'll feel like this is kind of, maybe it's pushing the limits of what you can, you can do, but if you are a shredder, don't worry, we're going to take this into some very cool places very soon. We're just building this up gradually. So hopefully everybody can get a little something out of this. So anyway, what we have very quickly is, uh, the cool thing about this is when it, you play this stuff up to speed, what you'll notice is that it doesn't have the same athletic demands as playing, for example, uh, long strings of Satriani-esque legato, like... That requires, especially clean, requires a certain degree of athleticism from each individual finger, whereas this, because no one finger, keep an eye on each individual finger here, right? No one finger has to move very often. So, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna say this, right? Very good of you to have to, very good to have you on board. I'm really glad you like the guitar, right? You are our first actual comment on Twitch. Nobody watches us on Twitch. So hey man, everybody watches us on YouTube, but we're on Twitch too, in case you're wondering. Hey dude, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. That's a very kind comment, right? And I'm glad that's your first message. Thanks for being on board. I appreciate that. Really, really cool. <laughs> that's awkward. It totally is, right? It is it is a little awkward. I don't even know why we're on Twitch, but we are on Twitch. So anyway, uh, because why not? It's, you know, it's no extra burden to set it up. We simulcast lots of places. So anyway, what we have so far is we have this. There's our lick. Let's go to the dual cam real quick so you can see what's going on. Now this is getting into a place where we can start to really kind of make some magic with this because this rudiment of tap, high, low, middle, low, high can be moved around to all sorts of different positions. So let's try it. Let's stick here. And then let's keep the right hand static, but instead of playing four, five, and seven, let's move to playing five, seven, and nine. So get yourself ready. Same fingering, five, seven, and nine. Here we go. Did you catch that little transition? You would have noticed that what I've done here is I've used the time that my tapping finger is down to mask the transition from one position to another. So we get this. What 
what about four, five, and uh, two, four, and five? That's pretty cool. But don't forget, we can move our right hand as well. So we can go 12, we can go 11, we can go 12, we can go 14. We're playing roughly in G major here. We can go up to 16, wherever we want. So we can play this. All over the place, wherever you want to put your right hand, that's where you can put it. Let's put some filth on and let's take a listen to it uh, with a little bit of the good old fashioned filthy game. Then we'll talk about muting. And then once we've done that, we're going to touch a little bit on sequencing this across multiple strings. But if you're still with me, if you're still digging the tapping thing, let me know. So anyway, we got this. On and on we go to our heart's content. Now we can do this loads and loads and loads. James uh, Moodle has a very good question about using this in an improvisation context. We are gonna get to that, right? That's Tony, that's my friend Tony. Still tap, tap, tapping. Hey Tony, good to see you. Uh, yeah, our friend uh, James is, um, is asking about improvising. We're gonna answer that question. It's a very good question. We're gonna get a little bit further into this lick developing thing and then we'll get into that because there's some very interesting things we can talk about in a moment. Uh, but Craig's got the answer. Just explore the scales that are available to you, for sure. Um, so if you have a scale diagram, just practice moving your fingers to those positions, away you go. But we're gonna address the this sympathetic vibration thing for a moment, right? Because one of the issues that we get with this sort of thing is because we're using both hands to play on the fretboard, we can't really use our right hand to, uh, to mute in the same way. in the same way that we would if we're playing, I guess, more straight plectrum type playing. So what we do is this, right? This is the trick. Because before we go any further, we're gonna to need to know this trick, right? Take a look at the positioning of my right hand. This is another reason why the thumb's on top. Look at what's going on. I'll try and reveal this to the camera with the palm of my right hand on the strings. What I'm doing here is, uh, Live to play guitar, I'm gonna answer this in a moment, right? Uh, but going back to the sympathetic vibration thing, this is the mutant question. I'm using the palm of my right hand, or the flesh of the palm of the right hand, to rest on the strings that I'm not tapping. So all I'm doing is I'm literally, I'll show you this very quickly, right? If I'm about to tap on the G string, watch this, I'm gonna pluck each of these notes individually. Guitar is up, I had to check that there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. G string, nothing, nothing, not much. G string, B string, E string. It's just the G, B and E strings ringing out because I've got the flesh from the palm of my right hand muting the strings that I don't want to mute. Now, they don't want to ring out. Now, conveniently, you have uh, the two processes on your hand. Uh, I'm gonna hide this uh, close-up cam so you guys can see. See these two um, bits of meat going on in your hand here. Uh, one of these is the electronon, the electronon process, and I only know this. Oh no, it's not, it's the hyperphenon eminence is the one. Electronon process is something else. Hyperphenon eminence. <laughs> I only know this from bench press tutorials, which is really bad, but anyway. Uh, so these two little bumps that we have going on here, if your thumb is extended like this, you'll notice there's a little space right here. That is where the string goes in this gap right and that will give you muting on this side muting on the treble string side is taken care of the same way that we take care of muting when we play anything else in that the flat side of the undersides of these fingers is providing the dampening make sense so right hand is dampening the strings on the bass side left hand dampening the strings on the treble side hopefully that helps. So that's the mutant question, right? That's the mutant question. <laughs> Can a free anatomy lesson as a bonus, right? If you are studying anatomy and you use my, my teachings on this, you will fail your anatomy course because uh, 
all my anatomy comes from like being a gym bro and that's it but anyway so we have this lick right what about if we decided in our infinite guitar playing wisdom that we want to play this on a couple of different strings because why wouldn't we well if we're playing the key of g which for the purpose of this demonstration we are let's take a look at the notes we're playing here we have a G note, a D note, a C note, and a B note. All of those exist in this. First position of our G major scale played. As a three note per string scale. Now what you'll notice is the fingering on the G string. is the same as the fingering on our D string. So what we can do is we can transition from here, which is four, five, seven, tap 12 on the G string to the same thing on the D string. Now, we're going quite fast there, so let's slow that down. Now, here's a fun thing. The tapping finger can arrive on the string you're about to play, or the string you're moving to, ahead of the left hand. And it actually covers the string transition, which is very useful. So what we can do here is when it's time to move to the new string, We can tap and use that to cover Ooh. to cover the left hand moving to our next string. So let's try that. Let's try playing four notes or four times round on our G string, then exactly the same fingering on the D string. Why does that work? Well, our top note is a D note. Can we find that in our G string scale? Yes, we can. It's our fifth. So what we get is this. Does that make sense? Let's do four of each. Let's go. Now what you might find with this is that your left hand wants to lead the charge. And if it does, that's totally okay. You can run with it, right? There's no rule that says you have to change strings on a given tap or a given anything else. You can change strings whenever you like. So anyway, let's take this a little step further. What happens if we were to put this on our high E string and our B string? Well, a couple of ways we could do this. We could stay in position. So we could stay completely in the same scale shape, right? Where we play this. <laughs> will lead us to five, seven, and eight on our B string, on our high E string, we can probably still tap 12. So we can get this. That works just fine. Or here's another thing. We can tap, this is probably gonna get a little bit out there. We can tap in octaves. So we could take this G string And we could take all of these notes and move them up one octave. It's actually quite easy to do. What we can do here is we can take the tapping finger and we can play our one octave shape, which is this. Move the tapping finger up two strings and three frets, bop, bop, to there. Same thing with our first finger. Just take it from there to there. Pattern stays the same. Now we get this. If we transfer at the bottom of the pattern, We're only a half inch of some distortion away from some Guthrie Govan-esque tapping licks. We can do the same thing at the bottom, where we go from here, down the octave, to here. 
Put some distortion on it. Very cool lick. And like we literally just got from like this to that in a, in, in, you know, half an hour. Unbelievable. So anyway, we can continue this a little bit further if we take these octave positions and we also keep our D string notes in. So we had this. What about if we play that in this octave? Same fingering and upper string. Whole thing down an octave. And now we got this. And if you were in last week, you'll remember all about the tapping, bending stuff, tapping and vibrato. We can introduce those. We can play these sort of things. And we're Vito Prada. This is unbelievable, right? So anyway, let's go one little step further with this. What about ways that we can take our pattern that we've just learned and make it a little more interesting? Well, let's do some quick stuff with the right hand to elaborate on this pattern, right? What if we tap twice? Tap, tap, before we do our pull-offs, like this. That works. What if we slide our tap note up and down from, say, 15 to 17 and back? That works too. Nowhere near as difficult as it seems, is it? Right? party tricks. It's totally not true, right? This is a cool way to make some really interesting music, but what I want you to take away from this is we had this kind of learning curve today where we've gone, yep, 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 oh my god. Um, that is just to very quickly demonstrate to you what I'm not expecting, is I'm not expecting you guys to go from this, yeah, I'm with you, to this, yeah, I'm with you, to... Some of you will be able to do that, but I'm not expecting you guys to do that. What I'm expecting you to take from this is to go, okay, I can see the progression of how I'd get from here to that. It's just going to require a little bit of a time investment. And the actual process, really quite simple, nothing to it. So anyway, listen guys, we're going to come back and answer some questions because there are some very valuable questions coming in. Before we do, just want to take a quick moment and remind you guys that we don't just do technique stuff here at GI+. Uh, we do all manner of stuff, particularly we do some really, what I think at least, is some really good melodic and expressive content. So I want to show you this. This is Expressive Techniques Part 1. Just a trailer for one of our courses that we do. When we come back, we're going to be answering your questions. So if you have questions, pop them in the comments because I'm sure you do, we're gonna answer them. Hi guys, Nick Jennison from Guitar Interactive and GI Plus. Does your playing sound like this? When really you'd like it to sound like this.
Now, the difference between these two examples are not the notes that are being played, but rather the way the notes are being played. I'm sure you've heard this before. Guitar players will say to you, it's not what you play, it's how you play it. And when it comes to creating interesting, emotive, and musical sounding guitar lines, that is very much the case. And in this course, Expressive Techniques Part 1, we aim to equip you with the tools to sound more musical, more emotive, more interesting, and ultimately more expressive on the guitar. And we are gonna do this by exploring the three principal left hand expressive techniques, which are slides, bends, and vibrato. I'm gonna show you the mechanics of these techniques and how you can execute them cleanly, efficiently, and reliably. I'll also give you some exercises to help develop these techniques. And we're also gonna discuss some musical applications, how you might use these techniques in your own playing. We're gonna go into great depth with that stuff. And I'm also gonna give you a solo study, a piece of music I've prepared. And I'm gonna encourage you and kind of guide you through the process of applying expression to an otherwise expressionless and bare sounding piece of guitar playing. So at the end of this course, you are gonna be able to take otherwise uninteresting and fairly dry pieces of music and turn them into expressive, colorful, musical lines. And you're also gonna be able to take this and apply it to your own playing or to other people's music that maybe you're playing and you want to express in your own way. This is Expressive Techniques Part One. My name is Nick Jennison for Guitar Interactive GI Plus. I hope you'll join me. I will see you in there. So, you want to get access to that course, you guys know where to go and get it. It's available on GI Plus. Link down below. GI Plus members get that as part of their course, a uh, part of their membership, including so many other killer courses too, like uh, just my courses, Ultimate Melody, Ultimate Guide to Melody and Phrasing, Technique Hotfixes, Picking Strategies, uh, Mastering Modes. How did I forget Mastering Modes? Um, and a wealth of other courses from all of our great tutors too. We'll talk more about that another time. So um, here's a very cool one. Mark McNish is saying, Tom Quayle's uh, legato lesson put me on the five minute block track. Ah, fantastic. Love that, right? Love that. The five minute block track um, in terms of like playing for five minutes with a new novel idea and then Moving on, very into that, very, very cool. So um, yes, this can absolutely be applied to tapping. So listen guys, there's been some great questions coming in, but before we do, I want to take a moment uh, and let everybody know that Liam Tate is our MVP of the day for like, no shit, transcribing the tapping from the Power Rangers theme tune in the YouTube comments, right? For those of you who are not catching this in the YouTube comments, catch this video in the replay. Here's the tab, that's fantastic. I love it. This is the best. I'm gonna try and play this, right? So what do we got? We got 12, uh, 9, 5, 9. Okay, let's play it. It's 12, 9, 5. And then 14, 11, 7. Uh, I'm playing that right? Yeah, that's killer. And then what do we got? We got 16, 11, 8. That's that right? Ah, oh, there it is, okay. 16, 12, 9. And then 17, 12, 9. And then a 16 on the G string. Dude, you made my week. There you go. Those of you who want to learn the Power Rangers theme tune, that's where to go get it. Fantastic. Very cool. So anyway, some questions, right? So we're going to get onto this for a moment. Uh, Rick Elliott's asking the question, are you mimicking the chords outline with the tapping pattern? Harmonics still apply at the 12th fret interval. Uh, okay, so uh, this is one of the things that I guess will, um, I guess it might confuse some folks in that you can mimic the chord changes with a tapping pattern. So we take the classic, I don't wanna get a copyright strike again, but if we take the classic eruption chord pattern, which is. Uh, 
Uh, we're outlining some chord changes there. So we have specifically a C sharp minor, an A major, a B7, E major, so on and so forth. You don't have to do that. You can use any combination of scale notes and play those. So you don't have to outline the chord changes. They don't have to be an arpeggio. But here's the deal. Like, if I play um, an E minor, I can outline any chord from E minor. Let's take E Dorian, for example. still kind of sounds like kind of sounds like that so uh, you can you can just pick chords from within the key it doesn't matter if everybody else is playing those chords at the same time however you can absolutely do that if you wanted to for example do something like the Nuno Betancourt uh, thing now everybody talks about the, the um, uh, get the funk out solo quite rightly but I think the best example of the Nuno pattern is in the He-Man Woman Hater solo uh, which is this I'm going to try this. Let's see if it works on camera. Wherever it goes from there. It's been a long time since I've played that solo, but you can use these to outline chord changes, but you don't have to. You can just play notes through scales. Here's a very fun example for those who might be interested. We could take pentatonic scales and do this, right? So let's say, for example, we took our E minor pentatonic here. And then we also took the E minor pentatonic uh, position number five here. If we were to take our left hand, play our pentatonic in position five and then use the right hand to tap the top notes of position number one which will give us this we can get this so you don't have to use it uh, it's a very good question Rick but you don't have to use it to do that but you also can uh, so there you go um, we have some other ones uh, going I think I've answered a few of these already so we've already talked about that sort of stuff uh, live to play guitar says Nick I run out of momentum is that normal it does happen now what you can do we talked about the idea of brush and pluck type pull-offs you can actually use a pluck type pull-off uh, if your tapping is kind of running out of momentum just to get some energy back in the string that can work, but I feel like the best way to get energy into the string, if that's what you mean, is with a forceful hammer-on. Remember, a hammer-on, we're striking the string, but the, the thing that makes the sound is not us hitting the string, it's the string forcefully impacting the fret. We can hit the string as hard as we want if there are no frets for it to hit, like this. Not much is going to happen. So my fingers are under there. I'll show you that with a close-up camera. Right, I've got my fingers under the G string. So it's got no frets that it can hit. So I can hit that as hard as I want. As soon as I let the string hit the uh, fret, note happens. So I reckon the best way to keep the momentum is either to have a very forceful hammer on. It's, remember, it's more of a strike than a press. But we can also, if you need to, use a forceful pluck to get some energy back into the string, much like if you're playing legato patterns. And you run out of steam, you can use a sneaky pick stroke to get some energy back into the string. Hopefully that helps. Right, James Will is asking, how do you use this in improvisation context? This is a big question, right? Big, big, big question. So what I would suggest is the following. I would suggest beginning with a backing track. This is how you're gonna develop it in an improvisation context, right? So I would suggest beginning with a backing track and beginning with a single tapping sequence like the one we talked about today. Other tapping sequences are available. You don't have to do this high, low, middle, this tap, high, middle, low, middle, high. Do all sorts of stuff. You can play this. We can play this. 
can play this. We can play this. All sorts of tapping patterns are available to you. I would suggest picking one, and I would have a clear idea of the notes that are available to me within a given key. And then I would explore mapping that tapping pattern to those notes that are available to me. So if I was playing in the key of G major, I would have a very clear idea that this is my G major scale. So is this. So is this. So on and so forth. I would practice mapping my tapping ideas to that. Now, if you're not sure of where to go with that, what you can do is, because we're practicing and not performing, and there are very few consequences to getting it wrong, you can just try stuff. So if you're here, let's go to the clean sound so we can talk over it. Are you not sure where to go next? Let's say we're in G major. You can do something like this. That's not it. And you can move one finger at a time, iteratively, until you get the right results. You go, is that it? That's not it. Is that it? That's not it. Is that it? That's it. You move one finger at a time, and then you catalog that as, okay, G major, we go here. What about if I go to the next string? That works, cool. All right, what if I'm here, and I go here? That's not it. That's it. Now, this is why it's important to have a backing track, because the backing track will allow you to correct by ear. And in the process of doing this, by listening and reacting and cataloging your ideas under the two umbrellas, the two umbrellas that we divide all of our musical ideas into, which are, as you look at it, didn't like, did like. So, didn't like that. I did like that you're on a winner, because all you're gonna do is you're gonna go through this, you're gonna explore this as freely as you want to, and you're gonna remember the stuff that you did like and do it again next time, and remember the stuff that you didn't like and avoid that next time. And that's how we develop any improvisational idea. Hopefully, that helps. Big answer to a big question. Anyway, we've got some more stuff. Uh, Liam Tate's asking, uh, how mental is everyone's left hand little finger? How controlled should it be, i.e. how close to the fretboard? Mine actually comes quite a way away from the fretboard. I'm uh, double jointed, as you can see. Uh, so double jointed pinky fingers. Uh, I also have double jointed thumbs on both hands. Uh, double jointed pinkies, double jointed thumbs. Definitely not built to play the guitar, let me tell you that much. But, you know, if you're bloody minded enough and you practice the right stuff, you're lucky enough to have the good guidance that I've had, you'll be fine. Uh, so, yeah, don't worry too much about it, I wouldn't say. Um, question uh, regarding uh, meeting with my right hand palm. With a lot of distortion, there's an element of a scraping sound. Any tips for keeping that down to a minimum? Uh, the more you practice this, the more it'll start to go away. Uh, there is, but the other thing with this is handling noise with the guitar is normal um when we hear guitar playing with zero handling noise and i mean zero i'm always a little bit suspicious like i would encourage you to listen to steve lukather's isolated guitar parts because there's a lot of and in there it's a bit like breath noise when you sing uh it's there it gets edited out in records sometimes but it's there i wouldn't be super concerned about it if it's just a little bit of that nothing to worry about, right? You'll find that something you can do to alleviate this and get a little bit cleaner, I had to check that I was actually doing this before I told you to do it. So one thing you can do is you can do this sort of thing where we uh, essentially take the tapping hand muting the flesh and we just gently lift it from the string. I'll see if I can show you here. I don't think I can, but we'll gently lift it from the string. That's a very exaggerated version of what I'm doing, but we'll, when it's time to move, we'll be here, we'll lift, go to the new position and then re-mute. But it's not something that's very easy to do consciously. It'll just sort of happen. It's almost like going like this. It's like flopping onto the new string. If you take a look at what's going on here. If I remember to be clean, I'll try that again. Uh, some of the time sometimes I don't remember uh, but if I hear that 
I'll normally react to it and start doing that sort of thing. Guys, we're running a little late, but I'm going to see if we've got one more good question in us. I will try my best to get through as many of these as we can. Uh, what do we have? Uh, to get... <laughs> To get a feel for uh, Nick's vibrato, it takes time to feel it. Love you, bro. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's very, very kind. Really do appreciate that. Uh, a lovely comment as well, by the way. Just going to highlight this um, from our friend Daryl. Uh, really sweet comment. Uh, I really appreciate that, man. That's really lovely of you to say. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time to gas me up like that. Um, you know, guitar players, we should gas each other up. We're doing a cool thing here, right? So it's not a contest. We're here to have fun with the guitar. And, you know, like, I appreciate that. When I see some cool guitar playing, you should never be afraid to compliment someone. Uh, and if someone compliments you, you should never be afraid to take it, right? Victor Wooten talks about this. Uh, if someone gives you a compliment, don't feel compelled to go, oh, no, 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 don't be silly. I'm, I'm nothing special. Accept the compliment. Be like, yeah, that was nice, man. I appreciate that. That's really kind. Thank you very much. So a lovely compliment. I really do appreciate that. Anyway, here's the question uh, from Mark Crandall. Can you tap any note that you would pick in the scale? Yes. Any note that you would play with this hand, you can play with this hand. Simple as, right? It's like having a detachable hammer-on finger. Why didn't I use this analogy? Uh, a week ago when we started talking about this, but even still, imagine if you had like a removable Inspector Gadget finger, like Go Go Gadget finger that just came off and just hovered up in space and was an imaginary hammer on finger. Think of the things you do with it. Well, you do. It's just attached to this hand. Uh, that's a cool analogy. I like that. Uh, Mark McNish, would playing scales on single strings be a way to practice? It would be an excellent way to practice. Yes, it absolutely would. Absolutely would. Uh, James Will, what is your favorite tapping run? I got some good ones, but my all-time favorite will forever be the one that concludes the intro to Hot Potato, which is this. <laughs> it's so cool. Like, I mean, just come on. It, it's not terribly complicated, but it's sick. Another one that I never got around to learning, but is unbelievable is um, Steve Vai's unaccompanied tapping I don't even know what you call it like is his just like blizzard of un insane tapping in at the very end of the solo for Wings of the Storm by Whitesnake where it's just like four bars of silence and Steve Vai does this stuff and it's just mind-boggling just phenomenal like Absolutely killer. Uh, Timothy Appling, as these two lessons have given me more uh, more knowledge to uh, dive deeper into adding tapping to my playing. Man, that is the result we want. That's really good of you to say. I, I appreciate that, man. That's our goal here. We're trying to help you guys along with your guitar playing journey, trying to demystify some stuff. So you know what it is? Every one of you that uh, has these little breakthroughs, no matter what level you're doing this stuff at, Makes me very, very happy indeed. So I'm glad he said that, dude. That's really kind. Uh, who else do we have? A couple of quick ones. Uh, real quick. Uh, Tony Stromella Band. Uh, what about tapping with the side of the pick? Very cool stunt. I don't do it very much. Uh, personally, I feel like I don't have the level of um, tonal control, I guess, and also not the same level of dynamic control or all this other stuff, but it can be really cool. It's a Satch thing where we go. <laughs> Everybody knows that bit from the Surfing the Alien solo. It's a great sound, right? It's really, really cool. Uh, yes, it does work, but I don't feel like it affords us the same improvisation possibilities as tapping with the finger. However, if you're really good at this, I don't see why it wouldn't. I just, I'm sure it's something that could be completely musically viable as a full tapping solution. I just haven't developed it, if that makes any sense. So anyway, guys, listen, there's so many great comments. I really wish I could, uh, I really wish I could get into all of them, but we have run way over time. So I'm going to conclude that there. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Nick Jennison from Guitar Interactive, GI+. Plus. Don't forget, we do this every Monday. So if you're not already subscribed to us on YouTube, you know what to do. And if you're not subscribed to our mailing list, go to guitarinteractivemagazine.com. You'll find links to do that there where you can then go sign up for our mailing list. We'll send you lessons uh, through the post. Through <laughs> the post? over email that's what i'm trying to say uh, uh we'll also let you know when we're about to go live we'll let you know when we have gone live so you never miss one of these dreams right 
do those things. Also, if you haven't done so already, consider uh, subscribing to us on YouTube. Consider signing up for more lessons at GI+. Plus. Links are down here. Go get that exclusive Danny Gill lesson that's down there. It's going to be available for 24 hours for non-subscribers and permanently at that link and only at that link for subscribers. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, share this with your guitar playing friends. My name's Nick Jennison, Guitar Active, Guitar Interactive, GI+. Plus. I'll see you next week. 8 p.m. UK time. Be sure to check the time. Whatever the time is in the UK, get World Clock out on your phone. See what's going on in the UK. 8 p.m. our time. That's when we'll see you. So check your local times. Make sure you're with us. Better to be an hour early than an hour late, though. So happy you all made it in this week. I'm going to tap a few more notes, I think. Uh, but I'll see you guys next week. Let's go to the close-up cam so we can see what's going down here. Let's go back to that crazy uh, Zach Wilde style backing track uh, that we had in the intro because it's so much fun. Uh, yeah, let's do it. My name's Nick Jennison. See you next week. Yeah. I could do that all day, and I probably will. But I'll see you guys next week. Take care of yourselves, 8 p.m. UK time. See you there. My name's Nick Jennison, and it's a pleasure to introduce to you GI Plus, the brand new lesson platform brought to you by Guitar Interactive. We've assembled a team of the best players and educators in the world to bring you exclusive lessons covering everything from metal to blues to fusion and everything in between. Want to level up your shred chops? Check out How to Play Fast by Andy James. Or how about Sweet Picking with Rick Graham? Or maybe Country's more your bag? Well, how about a full-length exclusive country guitar course from Andy Wood? Interested in learning how to play over changes? Well, members get access to hours of exclusive lessons from fusion maestro Tom Quayle. Or maybe you want your playing to sound more soulful. Well, who better than Chris Buck to show you how it's done? Or perhaps you want to learn the secrets of the masters. Well, members get access to over 60 feature-length tech sessions where our tutors painstakingly decode the styles of players like David Gilmour, Eddie Van Halen, John Petrucci, Larry Carlton, Slash, Tosin Abbasi, Paul Gilbert, and many more. You 
get all this along with exclusive live webinars, free backing tracks, competitions, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for GI Plus today.